Good morning, good morning, good morning. Why don't you guys go ahead and find a seat as soon as you're able. Good morning, good morning. Wow. We got a packed house this week. This is awesome. So good to see so many familiar faces and new faces. Um, I do got to let you know, we do have coffee now in the back. I know that there may have been a situation, but we got coffee. Great time to go get it. Um, but good morning. My name is Derek. Um, and uh, here at the Boulevard, our mission is to discover God's love with our neighbors, not for our neighbors, but with our neighbors. And we do that through our three values. We gather, we grow, and we give. We gather in community, we grow in our relationship with Jesus, and we give generously. So if this is your first time here, I would love it if you could fill out a welcome card. They're in the pews in front of you. Um, fill it out, turn it into the connection point in the back. We'd love to put a name to a face. Um, you can also find that welcome card online. But yeah, we're just glad you're here. So now for a few quick housekeeping things. This is the last week to turn in your Thanksgiving food box. I'm sure you guys are all planned ahead and got them all turned in already. But if you haven't, there's a big pile right out in the lobby. So fill your box with non-perishables, turn it in. You guys got a little bit of an advantage at first service because you can go after this service and still be back by the time church is done. So turn them into the lobby. Um, secondly, this one's important. So I want you guys to all pay attention to this one. Next week, Sunday, one service, 10 a.m., all right? It's a family service, so it's for people of all ages. We'd love to see every one of you guys here, um, 10 a.m., put in your calendar. I'd hate to see someone show up to church at the wrong time. So, uh, yeah, so then a couple weeks from now, December 2nd, ladies, you can go ahead and pull out your phone, put it in your calendar. December 2nd, we have a holiday porch pot event. I just learned what a porch pot is. They're pretty cool. So I'd love it if like as many ladies in here could uh, could be there. I know it's going to be a great time. It's at Decker Bros Farm in Allendale, and uh, it's going to be a great time. It is uh, RSVP is required. It is fifty dollars per pot. So, but this is going to be a really great event of community, um, and love it for as many people to participate as they can. All right, perfect. So now we are going to enter a time of giving. So if you are a guest for the Boulevard, we want you to know there is no obligation to give. Uh, we just want you to sit here and receive this morning. But if you are a, a guest of the Boulevard and you call Boulevard home, there are a few ways you can give. You can scan the QR code on the pew back in front of you, um, or you can drop your offering in the plate as it goes by, or there are little black boxes in the back. So uh, as the ushers come forward, uh, I'll just pray over this offering, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Perfect. Yeah. Almighty God, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for the gift it is to, to worship freely in community like this. Um, God, we trust you are a God that can, can do so much with so little. So I just pray that you, you take the little that we have to offer and do a mighty work. We trust your will be done with this offering and, and make it work through this church and through our community and through our county. So God, just take what we have and bless it, God. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. How's it going? We doing all right? Yeah? Why did you come to church today? I know it's probably weird. Pastor's asking you why you came to church, but why did you come to church today? Jesus is king. Amen. I find it uh, important um, for me, and maybe it can be important for you sometime uh, when you really ask the question, what are my intentions with church today? I'm assuming a lot of you came more uh, for more than just coffee, more than just connecting with friends that maybe you haven't seen in a week or two. Uh, but my prayer, our prayer, our leadership team's prayer is for you uh, to encounter the Lord Jesus in a life-changing way. Our prayer is that you would encounter Jesus in a way that you are discovering God's love for maybe the first time, or maybe you are rediscovering God's love for, for the millionth time. We hope that you came with the intentions of growing deeper in your faith. And if you are somebody who does not have faith, and you came and you entrusted our community to help you explore your faith, we're really glad that you are here. And we hope and pray that you too discover God's love with our neighbor. Today is a day that we get to see the manifestation of discovering God's love with our neighbors by celebrating baptism. Boulevard, uh, we are an interesting faith community. We 
are a five-year-old church that are, is just trying to figure it out. And one of the things that I love about our community in the early stages of our life was we said, hey, you know, what are we going to do about this baptism and dedication thing? Are we going to dedicate babies? Are we going to baptize babies? And it was a, a living room conversation where we said, hey, why not do both? Which is interesting. I love that our leadership said the thing that we care most about as a faith community is helping each other follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And we do not want any barriers to prevent us from supporting, encouraging, and praying for one another as we encourage each other and our children to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And so we dedicate babies. If you were with us last weekend, you saw that. And today we are going to celebrate baptism. Baptism is a sign and seal of God's promises to his covenant people, the people that he has promised his grace and love to. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sins, to adopt us into the body of Christ, the church, to send his Holy Spirit daily to renew and cleanse us and to resurrect us to eternal life. Life. Now, does this mean that baptism is the thing that, that seals us to be saved into eternity? No. Uh, baptism is the sign that points to God's grace and God's grace alone for our life and for the life of our children. So the emphasis on child baptism is grace. Look at your neighbor and say grace. We do that a lot here if you are new. So get comfortable with the people that you are sitting next to. Um, we are going to celebrate uh, two baptisms this morning, well, three baptisms, but uh, I'm going to invite uh, the Haydens and the Negokirks up. Everybody give them a round of applause. <laughs> hey, Haydens. Why don't you come this way? Hey, good job, you guys. Hey, so we're not only celebrating the miracle of um, baptism, but we're celebrating the miracle of you guys coming early. So thank you for coming early. You guys can come a, a little closer. Um, it's been uh, such a gift uh, to walk alongside both of your families um, and see how uh, our community uh, has supported you and encouraged you to make this decision uh, today. And it's such an honor uh, to feel like you guys trust us enough, that you're a part of our community enough that you would want to um, celebrate what the Lord is doing and what the Lord will do in your little one's life. Uh, so before we, 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 we do the thing, the baptism thing, I got some questions for you. Um, and if you don't remember the answer, it will also be on the screen. Friends, do you recognize your little one is made in the image of God and yet also has a problem with sin, which will show itself in his or her life? If so, say we do. We do. Do you embrace Jesus as your Savior and the one who leads you through this life? If so, say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Will you raise this child in the faith? If so, say by the grace of God, we will. Awesome. What I love about baptism is that they are not only making a commitment to the Lord, um, but our congregation is also going to make a commitment to these little ones. And so if you're able, I want to invite you to stand and make this commitment to Bridget and Grace. Boulevard Church, do you promise to love, encourage, and support these brothers and sisters? By teaching them the gospel of God's love, by being an example of Christian faith and character, and by giving them strong support of God's family in fellowship, prayer, and service. If so, say, we do. We do. Awesome. Y'all may be seated. That was a hearty we do. I like that. I like that. That's an important piece, y'all. Uh, you know, you've heard the saying, it takes a village uh, to raise a child, and I believe it takes a village to disciple a little one in the ways of the Lord. And us parents, we need a community. So thank you for making that commitment this morning. Hayden's, I'm going to start with little Gracie here. Hi, Gracie. How you doing, girl? You want to come over here? Come over here. I'm going to baptize Gracie, and then I'm going to pray for you guys. Okay. Grace. It's all right. It's all right. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Holy 
Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, for Grace. I thank you for the ways in which you have shaped her in her mother's womb, for the ways in which she already expresses to us the power and the miracle of your grace. Lord, as grace comes to life, as grace begins to know who you are in her life, I pray that her name would lead her way. I pray that you would allow her to have an intimate relationship with your grace so much that she wouldn't be afraid to ask for forgiveness from you or from her loved ones. I pray, Heavenly Father, that she would just know that your grace is free. I pray, Heavenly Father, that she would know that your grace is light. Thank you for the free gift of your grace, Heavenly Father. And I pray that as Noel and Annie raise their little ones up in the ways of you, Jesus, that they would feel your strength, that they would feel your endurance, that they would feel your love, and most of all, Heavenly Father, may they feel your grace. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Bridget. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Holy Grim. There's water. Bridget, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Bridget. We thank you for the ways that you have already formed her to express your love, to express who you are in her to not just her parents, but to all of our congregation. As she lives and as she grows, Heavenly Father, may she know that you have blessed her and may she know the power of your protection. May she know how you smile on her and you constantly extend your gracious hand toward her. May the Lord continue to show her your favor and may she continue to feel the peace of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the life of Bridget in our church, and I pray, Heavenly Father, that even she would lead the way to express your goodness in our community's life. As Matt and Jill raise her up, Lord, I pray that you too would give her them endurance. I pray that you would give them love. I pray that you would give them grace to extend to each other, but especially extend to Bridget. Lord, I uh, celebrate you for the gift of today. May today uh, be a life-changing moment for even Bridget, even though she doesn't understand it or know it yet. May she feel by the power of your Holy Spirit, your love for her. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome, guys. Yeah, we can celebrate that. Yeah. I want to invite my friend Anla up. And Brad, you're welcome to come too. Um, Anla's story with our community um, happened by way of actually Brad. Um, the power of, you guys can come a little closer. The power of um, prayer uh, is expressed in this very moment in our church. Um, Last summer, so not this past summer, but last summer, Brad came to the back and asked for prayer. And he asked for prayer for his wife who um, was experiencing a really difficult illness. Um, myself and a couple others prayed with Brad and um, didn't see him for a while. But he came back and he was excited to introduce me to Anla. Anla and Brad were excited to uh, tell us that Anla um, was healed uh, by the grace and powerful healing hand of the Lord. Amen. Yes, we can celebrate that. And many of you here know this story, um, and many of you here um, partnered with us as we prayed for the healing of Anla. And it is such a gift as um, a follower of Jesus, but especially as a pastor, to see someone uh, experience a miracle in their life and say, the Lord has to be real. 
and I pray that Anla could be an example for so many of us to pray for healing, to pray for reconciliation, to pray for a powerful miracle in our lives so that we can, too, say, the Lord has to be real. Anla, it's a gift uh, to um, be here with you, and I am so amazed by your uh, journey and it's just such a powerful testimony to hear how the Lord has healed you and uh, to see you here in this very moment. Um, I am proud of you as your pastor and as your friend, and I just cannot wait to see how the Lord is going to use your story to make a difference in his kingdom. I have a couple questions for you, Anla. Um, do you recognize you are made in the image of God and also confess your sins in front of God and God's church? If so, say, we do. Do you embrace Jesus as your Savior and the one who leads you through this life? If so, say, Jesus is Lord. Will you, confess, will you continue to grow in the faith, Allah? If so, say, by the grace of God, I will. All right. You want to come this way? I'm going to put some water on your face. I'm going to pray for you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you extend your hand to pray for Allah? <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. Lord, I thank you for the ways that you have brought Allah to this point. For her to confess your sins in front of you, in front of her faith community. For her to receive your forgiveness in front of you and in front of your faith community. Lord, we praise you. We praise you for healing. We praise you for uh, the journey. We praise you for being a God who loves us even when we do not love you in return. Lord, for Anla, I pray that you continue to reveal yourself to her and may she continue to seek you. May she understand the power that she has in you, Heavenly Father, and may she know that you have called her, that you have given her specific gifts to serve you and your church, Heavenly Father. As she seeks you and as she discovers more of your love, Lord, I pray that she would always be ready to share her testimony. I pray that she would be always ready to remind others of how good and how powerful you are, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Brad and the ways in which he has loved his wife up until this point. Lord, I pray that you continue to strengthen their marriage. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would be reminded of this moment for the rest of their lives. And may this moment be a defining moment in their marriage and in their family's life. Lord, I pray that you continue to use them. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Amen. 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 Awesome. I always feel this way in baptisms, like, okay, we can just close it up and go home. Um, but I, I do think the Lord has given me a word uh, to share with you. And so uh, if you would like to take notes, I want to invite you to do so. If you have our app, the outline of our notes is in our app uh, for you just to remember and talk it through as you're on your way home after you pick up the McDonald's french fries, of course. Why I'm thinking about McDonald's french fries is because I haven't had breakfast yet. So <laughs> thank God we have a breakfast after this. So I just want to invite you to that. So it's Thanksgiving week, right? Yeah, if you're like me, you're like praying on your knees. Uh, what are we going to make? <laughs> We're hosting our family. I got a family from Iowa coming into town. And I am so excited to host Thanksgiving because it means I get to break out my smoker. And I haven't busted out the smoker in a minute because we, we have a little one that prevents me from eating delicious meats. Um, but <laughs> we're busting it out. And my wife and I, for months, literally months, since our family uh, told us that they were coming into town for Thanksgiving, we have been discerning together on what to make. Do we smoke a turkey? But we both don't like turkey, so we're like, eh, probably not, you know. Uh, do we smoke chickens? You know, maybe. Do we smoke beef? Heavenly brisket? 
I'm leaning towards the heavenly brisket. We'll see what happens. But Thanksgiving has a way of reminding us to be thankful, which is an interesting day in our society. It's an interesting day in our culture because our society is just fixated on the hustle and bustle of life. The next thing to the next thing, the calendars, the, the appointments, the, the tasks in your job, just the daily grind has us thinking like, man, how on earth will I ever be thankful for the things that I have in front of us? And Thanksgiving is the gift in our country to be able to say, you know what, I can stop and just be thankful for what I have. Even through the interesting political conversations that you're going to have at the dinner table, even through the interesting conversations that you're going to have with your auntie or your cousin, it's a way to remind us that we are thankful. What I also think is interesting is for folks who are cynical like me, it forces me to push away my cynicism for a day. It forces me to be thankful. We all need optimistic people in our life because for a lot of us, we question things. We question things, and, and for us to question things, it, it, it makes us feel like we can figure some things out in our lives to make us feel like, okay, we have figured it out and we can commit, or we have figured it out and we can, we can dig in. But for some reason, Thanksgiving forces us to not keep our cynicism, to keep people or things at bay. It invites us to be thankful and say, the Lord has blessed me. The Lord has blessed me with the things that are right in front of me. The Lord has blessed me with the things that I cannot see. And as followers of Jesus, I want to invite you into this season of having a heart of gratitude. Having a heart of gratitude. The interesting thing is, however, as I survey the totality of Scripture, I find it rare to find people that show up with hearts of gratitude. Maybe because the people in Scripture are fallen and sinful just like you and I. But the examples of people who live all of their life with a heart of gratitude, it's hard to come by. Maybe you can think of that one person, maybe your grandma. But I would venture to bet that you and I have more examples of people who are ungrateful in our lives than people who are grateful. The scripture has so many people who are just ungrateful after ungratefulness after ungratefulness. And I think today we're going to learn from the life of King Saul. King Saul, in my mind, is the leader when it comes to having a heart of ungratefulness. We can learn so many lessons from King Saul. Saul uh, is found in the Old Testament. Um, the Bible says that he is a handsome man. The Bible says that he is tall. The Bible says that he is a great warrior. Saul first comes on the map when uh, the prophet Samuel looks at Saul and says, you know what, you're going to do something great for the kingdom. You're going to do something great for God. And through the prophet Samuel speaking that over Saul's life, Saul begins to live into that greatness. Saul begins to live into all of what God has called him into. He was a zealous man for the Lord, which throughout Scripture we see people who have done amazing things for the kingdom be super zealous. He was zealous. He, he tore down idols. He, he built churches. He built temples. He, he built altars so that people would remember how good the Lord is in his life. And he did that from a place of gratitude. But sin crept in into his life. Pride crept in into his life. And through the pride, his heart began to become ungrateful. And Saul's ungratefulness is what robbed Saul of his calling. And here we are in 1 Samuel 18, the story that I believe can teach you and I lessons from an ungrateful heart. So if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to open them to 1 Samuel 18. If you're like me who needs kind of help with your physical Bibles, just look for the numbers in the Old Testament. One, two, one, two, one, two. There's three uh, books in, or six books in the Bible that have one, two, one, two, one, two. Just look for it. First Samuel 18. If you do not have your Bibles, it'll be up 
behind me on the screen. It says this, Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war and appointed that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home after David had killed the Philistines, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. This made Saul very angry. What's this? He said. They credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands? Next, they'll make him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Here's what's happening in 1 Samuel 18. David and Jonathan, Saul's son, have become best friends. They're over each other's house playing video games, eating hot Cheetos, smothering hot Cheeto, you know, uh, whatever that's called, the, you know, what I'm talking about, all over the walls. And, and it just seems like Saul can't get rid of David. He's also noticing that David has a similar passion. He, David is a man after God's own heart. David loves to worship. David loves to dance. And, and Jonathan, Saul's son, obviously is taking an interest in, in David. And so it's just impossible it's impossible for Saul to not take interest in David. And so Saul says, you know what? He's a pretty strong guy. He, must, he might be able to, to help us out, win some battles. And so Saul invites David to accompany him on uh, some of the battles in the war against the Philistines. And sure enough, David is who Saul thinks he is. He's a mighty warrior. He's a man after God's own heart. And he's successful. And all of a sudden ungratefulness begins to creep in. And I think the first lesson that we can learn here in this story is that an ungrateful heart cares more about me than we. An ungrateful heart cares more about me than we. The most fascinating part about this story in my mind is that Saul invites David to help him fight battles on Saul's behalf. And all of a sudden, David accomplishes all that Saul would want him to accomplish. And even then, he wasn't grateful. <laughs> he was ungrateful. He cared more about me than he cared about we. He cared more about his own position. He cared more about his own influence. He cared more about his own power. He cared more about how people would perceive him than about the task at hand. The Israelites were under brutal attack, and they wanted safety. They wanted freedom to worship God the way that they wanted to worship God. And all of a sudden, they were getting closer and closer and closer to experiencing all that they wanted to experience. And Saul is like, no, it's more about me than about we. An ungrateful heart cares more about me than about we. I experienced this in my life on Sundays. A few years ago... Uh, my journey of preaching it, it kind of forced me into this hyper intense uh, posture of prayer, which I am super grateful for. Um, but uh, there was one Sunday I was standing in my spot. I was praying and I was worshiping and I was just praying and I didn't feel too hot about my sermon on that particular morning. And so I was just praying, Lord, give me the words. Lord, give me the words. Lord, give me the words. And then the Holy Spirit is like, I've already given them to you. Stop caring about yourself. Start praying for my people. What good is it if you have the most amazing words, but my people won't even listen to you or even be open to how my spirit wants to impact their lives? And the Holy Spirit cut me up in that moment. Friends, I know that the holiday season uh, can be difficult for many of us. It can remind us of loved ones who have passed. It can remind us of remind us of our loneliness. It can remind us of how much money we, we do not have or, or do have. It can remind us of just the isolation that we experience in today's culture and society. But 
my question to you is, when was the last time you prayed for somebody who was hurting and broken? Before you prayed for your own brokenness? Before you prayed for your own chaotic life? It's so easy to get wrapped up into our, our tasks, and it's so easy to get wrapped up in our drama, and it's so easy to get wrapped up in all of the things in our life that is not a, going according to plan. But I think what we can learn from Saul is that the Lord had already taken care of it. The Lord has already said, you know what, I have a path and I have a purpose and I have a plan for your life. And yes, you will go through situations and yes, you will, you will struggle with sin and, and yes, you will struggle with particular things that pop up in your life day in and day out. But the Lord is saying, I have already taken care of it. How might the Lord might invite you into a life of gratefulness so that you can not only pray for yourself, but begin your prayers with those in your community, those in your family, those maybe who are sitting right next to you. I believe that gratefulness expands our capacity to go beyond me and pushes us towards we. But if we have a heart of ungratefulness, it will always be about me. Because we cannot see past the mirror. The second lesson I believe we can learn from the life of Saul is that an ungrateful heart loses confidence in comparison. An ungrateful heart loses confidence in comparison. Can you just imagine the scene with me, friends? Just imagine the scene. They get back from war. They're all beat up and bruised. They, they probably have, you know, brave heart, you know, uh, uh, paint all over their face. And they're just like, all right, you know, like, and Saul comes in and he's like, I would imagine, you know, let's just bring it to like culture here. He's probably like the Taylor Swift. He's like, everybody's coming to me and everybody's excited about all of the songs that I'm singing and everything else. For some of us who have paid attention to this Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey thing, we all know that Travis Kelsey had put Taylor Swift on the map. Like the videos that we saw this week, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me help you understand. Travis Kelsey is an amazing football player, tight end. And this week, Videos surfaced, and everything that I saw in the video was all about Travis Kelsey and not Taylor Swift. What happens in this story of Saul and David is that Saul, who is the king, who had the power, who had all the influence, comes in, and people are so excited that he killed the thousands of people. But then David comes in, and everyone leaves that particular you know, platform, and everyone goes to the different platform of David, and everybody's like, but David killed the tens of thousands. They were so excited. All of the cameras were pointed at David, all of the lights, all of the, all of the phones, and everything else was pointed at David. What happened in Saul's life is he allowed ungratefulness to creep in, and it caused him to lose his confidence and forced him to compare. How might you be comparing in this particular season? You look at the things that you wish you had or the things that you so desperately need in your life, the things that you are praying for, and you open up social media and you see, man, they have it. They seem to have it all. And all of a sudden, because of your ungrateful heart, you start to compare and you start to, to say, the Lord must love them way more than the Lord loves me. Comparison kills our confidence. And when we are confident in the Lord, we do not have to stretch beyond who the Lord has already created us. When we are confident in the Lord, we know that we abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in us. And in God's economy, God has the whole world in his hands. And the Lord is saying, you know what, I, I want to bless them over there. And I, I want to bless them over here. And I got your blessings. If you were grateful, you would see them right in front of you. But because you are ungrateful, you are comparing yourself. And it's killing your confidence in who you are that I have made you to be. I find it interesting that Saul allowed ungratefulness to rob his confidence. There was no reason for Saul to, to feel like he needed to compare against what might have been a teenage boy at the time. But because of ungratefulness, ungratefulness will have you doing outlandish, petty things. And it allowed him to rob him of his confidence. 
how might ungratefulness be robbing you of your confidence in the Lord and causing you to compare? The gift of the Lord is that the Lord has an abundance for you to experience. And what might be a blessing to someone else doesn't mean that the Lord doesn't have a blessing for you. That was just their blessing, your blessings over here. But we can't see the blessings if we are not grateful for what the Lord has already gifted us. An ungrateful heart loses confidence in comparison. And lastly, an ungrateful heart will never be satisfied. An ungrateful heart will never be satisfied. 1 Samuel 18 is a gift, and it's also a drama. So you can stop watching the reality TV shows like obviously I do and start reading 1 Samuel 18. What we see in 1 Samuel 18 is uh, we see a man in Saul, and we see a young man in David. And David was doing all these amazing things, and so Saul is like, I I got to keep my enemies closer. And so I might just ask David if he would be willing to, to marry uh, one of my daughters. This comes after the fact that, that Saul tried to literally kill David. I don't know uh, if they had ninja stars at the time, but that's what First uh, Samuel 18 says, uh, that Saul was throwing uh, knives at David, and, and David was swifty, and he was young, and he was agile to move away from the knives. And even after that experience, Saul says, hey, you know what? I know I tried to kill you, but, but I, wanna, I want you to be in my family. Would you, would you marry one of my daughters? And David responds after Saul tried to kill him. Who am I to be your son-in-law? It's amazing what happens when we have a grateful heart. How we can go through trials and tribulations. How we can experience betrayal. How we can experience all of the things the enemy would try to do to knock us off of our course. Because David had a grateful heart, he was willing to experience forgiveness because he had already experienced that forgiveness from the Lord. And so he was willing to offer forgiveness to Saul. So Saul says, would you be my son-in-law? Would you marry my, my, my daughter? And, and David's like, who am I? Of course. Saul says, okay, well, go out to battle and do some things and come back. And when you come back, you will earn my love. You will earn my respect. Then I will allow you to marry my daughter. So David, of course, does that. Of course, David is successful. But then because Saul was ungrateful, he didn't allow that to happen. He was comparing a little too much. So he tells David to go out again. He, he says, hey, David, in order for you to have my next daughter, I, I want you to circumcise 100 Philistines. That means not only kill 100 Philistines, but circumcise 100 Philistines. David says, who am I? Of course, I want to honor you. I love you. David goes out into battle and not only kills and circumcises 100 Philistines, but he does 200. 200 Philistines. He brings back the body parts, which 1 Samuel 18, you know, this is a little interesting. It's the Old Testament, okay? <laughs> because of Saul's ungrateful heart, he still was not satisfied. Saul had everything that he ever wanted. Saul had everything that he ever dreamed of. I would imagine that many of us feel similarly to Saul. When we take a look at our life, we say we are more blessed than we even deserve. And Saul was exactly to that point. I don't think he understood the power and the influence that God would give him to move and shake the whole world, to shape the church, to even allow us to talk about him today. But because he had a heart of ungratefulness, he was never able to be satisfied. And because he was never able to be satisfied, nothing was ever good enough. And here's what happens when nothing is ever good enough. We also say we are never good enough. An ungrateful heart will rob your satisfaction. And friends, the question that I have for you is, how might you be blinded? by ungratefulness in your life? Do you allow your ungratefulness to focus on you, yourself, and I so much that 
other people's problems aren't as big or aren't as relevant to you? Well, if we're following Jesus, friends, let me encourage you and remind you of the greatest commandments, love God and love your neighbor. It's hard to love our neighbor when we're only focused on ourselves. The only way we can get to that point is having a grateful heart. Do you have a heart of ungratefulness and it's blinding you of the confidence that the Lord wants you to experience in your life, to walk in the authority that the Holy Spirit lives and breathes in you? And you have a story and you have a testimony and you have gifts that the Lord wants to use to glorify him. But you can't do that because you are constantly comparing yourself to others who are seemingly doing it better or more often. Or is ungratefulness blinding you and stealing your joy so much that you cannot be satisfied with the simple truth that Jesus loves you, that Jesus came to die for you so that you can be grateful and be fully satisfied in that. Friends, as we enter into this Thanksgiving season, I want to remind you that in Christ, you find your identity, that in Christ, you can be grateful for all of the many gifts that he is constantly extending to you. And if you can be mindful of those powerful and simple things, I believe the Holy Spirit will begin to to shape and mold your heart in a way that, that removes the ungratefulness in your life and causes you to start to see how the Lord has already blessed you. So as the band comes up, I want to invite you into something. It's a practice that we do here at the Boulevard. I want to invite you to experience this song as a form of contemplation, as a form of prayer, and as a form to have you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, examine your heart and see where the enemy is robbing you of gratefulness in your life? How are you blinded by ungratefulness? And what are the areas in which the Lord might be inviting you to be grateful for what you have in this very moment? And I feel compelled to say this. If you are somebody who is in desperate need and you do not have everything that you need to thrive in your life, please tell us. We want to be a church. We are a church that supports and encourages all people, especially if they do not have what they need to thrive. But we can't help you if you don't invite us into that. But for many of us, I want to invite us into a posture of prayer. And I want you to ask the question, what is blinding me from experiencing the full satisfaction in Jesus? And for some of you, I know you felt compelled that I, that I got I to gotta go and, and pray for others. I, I got to pray for others. But, but in this very moment, I, I want to invite you to think only about you and the Lord in this very moment. Don't worry. We're going to be sent off and we're going to be challenged to think of others later. But for the next five minutes, think about how the Lord might be wanting to shape your life to move you from a heart of ungratefulness to gratitude. And if you don't know how to pray, we have a prayer team in the back that have been praying to pray for you in this very moment. You don't have to have the words. You don't even have to have the know-how. We have a team in the back that are ready to pray for you, that long to pray for you, that want to see you experience a life and a heart of gratitude. So I'm going to pray for us now as we enter into this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your love is the thing that we need. Your love and your grace and your mercy are the things that we long for. And because of sin in our life, we, we compare we, we become scarce about who you are in our lives, and, and we feel like in some ways you're going to run out. But, Lord, thank you for the truth that you never run out. You never run out of grace. You never run out of love. You never run out of inviting people into a space of belonging deep within you. And we can come to you and bring all of our sin and all of our pride to you and say, Lord, take this and remove it. Shake my heart, shape my mind in a way that has my heart and my mind and my whole body and soul reflect more of you, Jesus. So in this particular time, in this particular moment, Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that we would be bold enough to come to you, that we would be bold enough to be honest with you, and we would invite you into those deep, secret places where we have allowed ungratefulness to rob us of all of the things that you promise us. Lord, I pray that we would have the strength to leave it at your altar 
And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would receive a word from you in this very moment that would change our lives, Lord. This is why we are here. We're here to experience and discover more of your love. Let it be so, Holy Spirit. Thank you for being bold with the Lord. Thank you for bringing your full self to the Lord in that moment. Um, if you gave your life to the Lord today, we want to know because we believe that you cannot follow Jesus alone. We have to follow Jesus in community, and we want to know. That's why we have this card in front of many of you that says, I gave or would like to give my life to Jesus. We want to walk alongside of you. We want to support you. We want to encourage you in your faith. Um, please fill that out and drop it in the back where the connection point is. But church, you spent some time with you and Jesus. And now I want to just encourage you. I want to challenge you, in fact, to think beyond yourself. Be grateful for all of the gifts that God has given you. And bless the world with all that God has in you. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen and amen. Later.